Welcome back, everyone. Here is Ozzy News for today with me, Vanessa. Evacuation of school children after the 6.4 magnitude earthquake. Jangan ada di dalam ruang kelas. Berada di halaman sekolah. Students in Indonesia school evacuated after a 6.4 magnitude quake hit the waters of Sumatra Island. The country's geophysic agency said the quake struck near Mentawi Island was at depth of 10 km or 6.21 miles and has no potential to trigger a tsunami, but there were no immediate reports of damage or casualties. In the same week, two earthquakes of 5.2 magnitude and 5.9 magnitude had also struck near the same location. Indonesia straddled the so-called Pacific Ring of Fire, where different tectonic plates of the Earth's crust meet and create frequent seismic activity. Timur Leste and Australia signs Defence Sector Cooperation Agreement in Canberra, Australia. Timor Leste and Australian government on Wednesday signed cooperation agreement on reciprocal protections in the defence sector in Canberra, Australia. The agreement was signed by Timor Leste Ministry of Defence Force Filomeno Pashaun and Australian Minister of Defence Richard Marles in the Parliament of Australia after the Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and the President of the Republic of Timor Leste Jose Ramos Horta meet in Canberra. The agreement aims to establish reciprocal protections. Responsibilities will be in the hand of military in its territory. In addition, the Defence Cooperation Agreement will give space to Australia and Timor Leste to increase defence and security cooperation, especially for the domain of the sea, since the two countries share the maritime zones. The agreement also guarantees Timor Leste military personnel who undergo training and operation in Australia will be treated with the same protection and responsibility and privilege, the same as the Australian military personnel in Timor Leste. During the meeting, Head of State José Ramos Horta and Prime Minister Anthony Albanese also talks about general security, economic cooperation and worker mobility capacity. The government of Australia also supports its Timor accession to ASEAN. Chinese embassy works with Cambodian government to deliver trapped Taiwan compatriots. Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian at a press briefing in Beijing says the Chinese embassy has remained in close contact with the Cambodian government to search and deliver Taiwan compatriots trapped here, said on Monday. The Chinese embassy in Cambodia, in close communication with the Cambodian government, and actively searching and delivering relevant personnel. So far, the Chinese embassy in Cambodia has received calls for help for more than 20 Taiwan compatriots and has assisted the Cambodian side in delivering some of them. We will continue to follow closely the handling of the cases. The trapped Taiwan compatriots and their families may contact and seek help from the Chinese embassy in Cambodia timely. Zhao made the remarks in response to a question concerning media reports that some people from China's Taiwan were lured to work in Cambodia where they got imprisoned and physically abused. Resident school children in shock after 6.4 magnitude earthquake rocks Sumatra Island, Indonesia. Regarding to the natural disaster, the disaster agency urged the public not to panic and warned of the potential for aftershocks. High school student Nati Elunasia recalled seeing her friends cry and threw up in panic upon running outside of their classroom during the earthquake. We panicked, some of us cried, threw up, some fainted. So many things happened. It made them dizzy. I was dizzy too. Walking felt like being blown by the wind. According to the country's geophysics agency, residents of the city of Padang and village in Siberut Island in West Sumatra secured out of hospital and other buildings after a 6.4 magnitude earthquake struck off the coast of Indonesia's Sumatra Island, the third tremor to rattle the area. At the Muhammad Jamil Public Hospital in Padang, staffs, patients and families were evacuated outside and on the rooftop as the quake struck. Padang was struck by a 7.6 magnitude earthquake in 2009 and killed more than 1,100 people, injured many more and caused widespread destruction. Malaysia's former First Lady Rosma Mansour ahead of court verdict in corruption case. 
A Malaysian court is set to deliver its verdict on the corruption trial of Rosma Mansur, wife of former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak. Rosma faces three charges of soliciting and receiving bribes involving a sum of 194 million ringgit or 45.93 million dollar to help a company Jepak Holdings SDN PhD secure a solar power project. Of the total, prosecutors accused Rosma of arranging for 187 million ringgit to be paid as a political donation to Najib while also receiving two bribes of 6.5 million ringgit. She has consistently denied wrongdoing. Najib was voted out in a 2018 election amid widespread public anger at the government corruption and allegations that more than a billion dollars in one MDP funds had been transferred into personal accounts. Najib lost his final appeal on a 12-year jail sentence for corruption on August 23rd and was taken under heavy security to the country's largest jailhouse in Kajang, a sprawling complex southeast of the capital that holds up to 5,000 prisoners and includes a women's facility. If convicted, Rosma could be jailed for up to 20 years and fine up to five times the amount of the gratification she has pled not guilty to all charges. Indonesian villagers ask for aid after town goes underwater in flash floods. Displaced villagers in Indonesia's North Luwu district in South Sulawesi province pleaded for aid after flash floods triggered by heavy rains rendered them homeless. According to local media, flash floods struck North Luwu after heavy rains caused by the Rongkong rivers to burst, submerging schools and houses. Approximately 1,500 houses were affected and thousands of people forced to evacuate to higher ground. <laughs> Villagers interviewed by Reuters said they have not received any government assistance so far. Apart from food and clean water, 35-year-old housewife Rambla said the group of evacuees taking shelter in a makeshift tent is in urgent need of padding and dry wood for cooking. Indonesia frequently suffered from floods and landslides, particularly during the rainy season, though the situation is often made worse by the cutting down of forests. Putin meets Myanmar Junta chief in Russia. Vladimir Putin met Myanmar's junta chief during the Eastern Economic Forum in Russia's Far East port of Vladivostok. Myanmar has started buying Russian oil products and is ready to pay for deliveries in rubles, the RIA news agency cited junta leader Senior General Min Holeng as saying during the meeting. The Russian news agency also quoted Putin as saying relations were developing positively during the meeting. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov was also present during the meeting as Myanmar's ruling military tries to shore up one of its few diplomatic alliances as it comes under growing international pressure. Ming Oholeng on his second trip to Russia in less than two months, Myanmar state media said he will attend an economic summit, visit landmarks, universities and factories, and senior officials will meet counterparts as part of the visit. Ten dead in trailer truck crashes into school children near Jakarta. An official said at least 10 people have died, including seven children waiting for the school bus when a trailer truck plowed into a telecommunications pole outside a school in Indonesia's West Java. Latif Usman, a traffic policeman at the scene, said the school children were awaiting at the bus stop after class in the city of Bekasi when a trailer suddenly veered toward them and crashed into two motorcycles and toppled a communications tower. So the total number of victims I need to convey is as many as 30 people in total, with 10 deaths. This is temporary confirmation. Hopefully there will be no additions. <laughs> Usman said police is investigating whether the brakes of the truck failed as the vehicle was allegedly speeding over 60 km per hour. Well, thank you for watching. We'll see you again sooner. Have a nice weekend. Stay safe and stay healthy.